I'm going to pause this now for just a moment. So what you saw was the siphon action begin as the water came up over the top of the standpipe inside of this bell. What I'm going to show you, my invention to the bell siphon, which makes it work absolutely every time, without a doubt, is this little reservoir that I put at the side of the breather tube. Okay, I'll pause and come back when it's about to break siphon. Okay, we're getting pretty close here. Now what's going to happen is the water will continue to be drawn up inside of the bell as the water is sucked out of this small one inch cap at the end of the breather tube. That, there it goes. Well, that is emptying, and as you may be able to see, the water is going down below, <coughs> below the edge of that cap. And then, as you probably heard, it gets the ability. It has the ability now, then, to um, suck a whole lot of air without the water getting in its way, as is generally the the problem that causes these bell siphons not to work. Now let me show you the whole thing. We're going to take this is a weight that I use to keep the bell siphon steady. So there we have the cutouts at the bottom which allow the water to come back uh, to go back or to, to come into the bell siphon. So this is just a one inch cap and I've got a piece of one inch pipe in there. And I don't, yeah, you can see it there. Um, not, not, that, not that this would actually make the perfect connection to the bottom, but I didn't want to take any chances. So I cut that little tiny notch. I just didn't want this cap to get sucked up and close off the close off the water, or close off the air and water going up into this tube. So I put that very, very small notch in there. But seriously, I doubt that anybody is going to cut their pipe so perfectly that it would make that kind of a connection. Uh, this is my standpipe. It's a two inch, all the way up standpipe. It has a uh, of course a restriction going through the one inch bulkhead. So I'll just put this back down. And what I did here was I I just tapped a uh, tapped a hole into the side of this uh, bell and um, not real not real sure <laughs> I think it's a 3 8 or a 5 16 and I used a yeah, I'm not real good on these little plastic fittings to know what sizes I've used here. But uh, I didn't use the I didn't use a real small one. It's it, it, that's outside diameter is about a half inch. So I guess it's probably half inch there. Now this is the standpipe that I used to use. What I didn't like about it was this restriction here with this inch and a quarter pipe, which is fairly large pipe, but you know now I have absolutely open two inches. Gets a lot more volume going through here. So that is the answer to the the Bell Siphon Blues. I have spent, literally, literally spent 40, maybe 40 plus hours 
figuring out this one little trick. Building siphon after siphon. And I hope this helps you all out because somebody needed to come up with a better answer. I mean, this, this without, without this little tube, this thing was working for an entire week or longer perfectly. And I come out here one morning and it's not working. And it wouldn't work. I tried, you know, I, I started the site, the, I filled it all up again and you know, it would not work. It just would not go back to working. So I had to figure out something. And uh, it's taken me about two days to come up with this little answer. Okay, I hope it helps.